Uh, okay, so you know, there's the, the stuff that uh, you feel like made you gay or confirmed your gayness for you, um, but they weren't necessarily gay, right? Okay, so for me, which you know, it, it was Wonder Woman, the Bionic Woman, um, Jamie Summers, Lindsay Wagner. I mean, it's just like sh there was something about her that I, you know, it's just she had that em empathy and the way she looked at other people, and she was just so beautiful and strong and and the slow motion and the hair and the slow motion. I would, I would, I would you know, run everywhere in slow motion going <laughs> You know, all that stuff. And I know everyone talks about Wonder Woman, but I do have like the craziest Wonder Woman collection. I have every doll, I ha it's like my whole wall is like Wonder Woman. Wonder I, I, I have, it's, a, it's, an, it's, it's, it's unhealthy. <laughs> gem, gem in the holograms. Um, and Jem was a ahead of its time. She was a uh, a record label executive by day and a pop star by night. With the help of her magic Jem star earrings, and she would say Showtime synergy, and she would become a pop star. Um, so what gay boy is not going to love that? You know, I mean, you you become someone else. Uh, you know, you, yeah, you become someone else by touching your your earrings. Look, I even have a little Jem star earring on right now. Showtime synergy. Annie, I know, I, I figured no one's gonna have the guts to talk, No, every, everyone's gay shame is gonna be too great to talk about Annie, but I, I'm gonna have to just talk about Annie and the influence of Annie and wanting to be Annie with, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I had curly, I had a Jufro, um, but it wasn't quite a, uh, a um, uh, ginger, a ginger Jew, a ginger fro, <laughs> a ginger fro, um, fire starter starring Drew Barrymore. Um, it was a flop, um, but I think it stands the test of time. I would watch it over and over and over again, and to this day, um, if something's bothering me, or uh, if I don't like something, or if someone's trying to come for me, I just, in my mind, I go, back off, just back off. <laughs> and I see my hair flowing with the, you know, and it gets, it gets really hot, and the hair starts to flow like there's a big, uh, I mean, she was, before Beyonce, before Mariah, I mean, she was the one who had the big fan blowing you know, her hair in the wind and when she'd get really mad and she didn't like when things were going on. And she had a sense of justice. So it was like this, you know, it, it, is, a, it is a gay prototypical storyline because she was mad at the world and she was an outsider and she had special gifts and talents and, and but she had that special power. Girls with special powers, that's a genre in and of itself. So, but, you know, and then there's like, you know, I, I was lucky because I grew up with a father who was a musical theater queen and so he imparted a lot of seminal texts to me. So the Gypsy movie with Rosalind Russell, um, although someone else was, was singing her part, I don't know who, but it wasn't her singing, but she was amazing, Rosalind Russell, but she, you know, who did not, who got the part over Ethel Merman because uh, Ethel Mer Merman was a Broadway star and they didn't think that she could carry the film even though she was so iconic as Mama Rose, the original Mama Rose. But then also um, Natalie Wood as Gypsy Rose, she was so, Gorgeous in that, you know. She starts off all meek, and then all of a sudden, you know, Mama, look, I'm, you know, I'm pretty. And I'm messing up the line, but um, Gypsy was a seminal, seminal text, and um, especially for me, growing up in show business as a little child star. So, well, you know, I have to say right here, right now, and I, you might not use this because this is, this is, to me, this is the foundation of all queer culture. Um, and it should be the foundation of all queer, queer culture for everybody. I'm going to be that prescriptive about it. And it was my foundation. I am that prototypical homosexual. It is the Wizard of Oz. I mean, the Wizard of Oz is the Holy Grail. So, you know, everything that comes after the Wizard of Oz, for me and, and, and for you too, whether you know it or not. So that, that, let's just put that aside. I'm sure plenty of people have spoken about that, but Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland, that's it. That's gayness right there. There's never been a gayer thing. There never will be. It, it is, it is, it is, the, it's, 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 it's our religion. Yeah. <laughs> Four plays that every homosexual needs to know about and have seen or at least read are 
Torch Song Trilogy by Harvey Firestein, Boys in the Band, Angels in America, Part 1 and 2, and, um, and um, The Normal Heart. So you, you can't skip any of them. That is it. If you've read those four, then you're good, I think. Uh, and so we studied gayness and, in school, and even then, with the boys in the band, um, even then there was, a, there was a question of whether this was still relevant, um, because there's so much gay shame in boys in the band. Um, and it's just funny that we were talking about its relevancy then, which I think was still quite relevant. And so now, you know, that you can definitely talk about that again. Like, is that is the boys in the band still relevant for young homosexuals who don't necessarily grow up with the same shame, who don't grow up with the same kind of closet that we had? Um, but I, I, I honestly believe that piece is so powerful, um, and it does speak to a, to a history of gay shame and. I still think the verdict is out um, about, you know, yeah, we, we live in a different world where we see gay people on television, we can kiss on TV, but, um, but to say that we don't live in a, in a deeply homophobic world, I think is way too premature. You know, it's like saying there's no racism just because we have a black president, you know? It's, so I do think that there's still gay shame and, and there's still a closet and, and therefore uh, the boys in the band is still incredibly just as relevant today as it was back then. I, I feel like the first time I really felt like I had arrived was in San Francisco. So after I saw Jimmy James when I was 15 on TV and decided to be a drag queen, I started working on my costumes and my names.